Good afternoon and welcome to the show for Friday afternoon. We're live in Galway. Now yeah, we've got ten choices in a wall of sound today. Will you pick one for us? I will go for it. I can't stand. Tony Fenton got his first gig at 17 working on Alternative Radio Dublin. He was born in Dublin and raised in Glasnevin. After a brief period as an apprentice carpenter, he turned his hand to making radio and quickly became known as the deep and velvety voice, first of 2FM and then Today FM. 102 today of um, beautiful day from you two. Now there's no doubt that it's a very sad day here in Today FM. I'm joined by three men in studio: Peter McPartland, CEO of Today FM, Mario Rosenstock of Gift Grub fame, and Ian Dempsey of The Breakfast Show. Now, Ian, we listen to that package there, and and while it is a really really sad day, there's a lovely smile across your face because there's no doubt that you've got some fantastic memories of Tony Fenton. Tell Absolutely. us about some of them. I mean, we were just listening there, and first of all, it's very hard to hear. Just watch your lips move. Susan and, and hear you saying the words Tony Fenton is dead because I just can't cannot believe it. We've known about it for a long time that he's been unwell but uh, we weren't expecting this so it's just a major shock and I'm sure people around the country as well are just feeling the same way but uh, uh, so it's very upsetting and we were just listening you know across 110th Street the Bobby Womack song there uh, it's just that is the one that is the song that kind of sums up it's, it's Tony's anthem so hopefully that's played a lot, quite a lot uh, here and on other radio stations as well but I mean I met Tony when himself and Barry Lang used to do a show and they used to broke down their names to- Tony and and Barry and it was Tobar so Tobar discos and I was kind of like the Yoko Ono when I arrived in on the scene and they let me come along and they let me play a few records while they went out for pints and things like that you know so I kind of broke in and uh, and and Tony became a fantastic friend of mine I had kind of known about him but I didn't know about it. I didn't know him very well but then uh, I, I met him through the radio stations I worked on pirate stations with him I worked in 2FM with him as well and then I mean one of the proudest moments for me was when I, we were in Abbey Street with Today FM and uh, when I came in one day to find that the entire building had been covered uh, with one of those big huge signs when Tony uh, signed with us which said Today FM, the new home of Tony Fenton. And I said, yes, that's my friend and here he is, you know. And the whole place and all the offices were dark inside because the sign was so big and you couldn't see it to turn the lights on. So it was just brilliant. And the positivity of the guy was just unbelievable right up to the very end, you know. And a real jock. If you say the word jock to anybody, they'll think Tony, Tony Fenton. Fenton. Everybody knows, everybody loves Tony. the first time you heard him on air? Um, I, well, I heard him on air on the, on the pirate stations and he did become more refined as the years went on, let's put it that way. Uh, but uh, and he always had that velvety tone about it. His voice and one of the things towards the, the end of his life uh, was was that he was he was on steroids and he was very concerned about the fact that his, he was losing the voice because the steroids were having some effect and it was making his voice a bit more crackly and a bit toastier than, than he wanted so he, he was saying to the doctors I want to get off these uh, these steroids and, and the doctors kind of uh, wanted him to do you know they, they wanted him to get the voice back as well so he was he was and he was always talking about coming back on the air as well which is it's just so sad Mario always a voice that you have indeed uh, done parodies of on gift Group. Yeah. Um, over the years. Tell us about your memories of Tony. Well, I got to know Tony through Ian, really, and Tony arrived into Today FM, um, you know, like a skyrocket um, back in the early days. Nobody that I have met really in my life knew how to live life so brilliantly as <laughs> Tony Fenton. He lived life like a Carlsberg ad. He believed <laughs> that everything was going to go great today, and somehow everything always went great for Tony today. And people used to look and go, how does that happen to Tony Fenton? Why does it only happen to Tony Fenton that things go so well? He was mischievous. He was warm. He was a complete gentleman. I mean, in an old-fashioned sense. This is the guy who used to um, you know, stand up at a table when a woman would um, come near the table. Um, this is a guy who could look into your eyes and listen to you for half an hour about your life and genuinely be interested. Um, he had a sense of mischief. Uh, he was uproariously funny, but in a sneaky kind of, you know, let's keep it to ourselves kind of way. Mm-hmm. And he had that unbelievable voice um, as well, he full also, of warmth. He also knew the value of a killer catchphrase. He did. I mean, I mean, from, dude, I'm pulling a shoot out of here, which is basically, I'm leaving. Um, and even last year on a promo we did for Today FM, which was unbelievably corny. But you kind of, I'm almost kind of crying and laughing at the same time. It was don't duplicate the dude. <laughs> and um, it, he's just... The thing about Tony was... Tony didn't have a wife and Tony didn't have kids. But for a man who didn't have wife and kids, he was surrounded by more love than you could ever imagine. And 
this place, Today FM, he often said, you know, he often looked wistfully as we'd walk away for lunch in the afternoon. He'd look back and he'd go, you know what? I love this place. I love Today FM. I love the people in it. Peter, over to you. Um, he did love Today FM and indeed Today FM loved him and all of the people here. Tell us a little bit about what he meant to his colleagues. He was absolutely a light uh, for Today FM. One of the leading lights, if not the leading light, certainly the last couple of years because, look, every station goes through its ups and downs. But Tony was always one of those people who always looked on the upside. Uh, he just had that habit, as Mario had said, of, you know, taking the, the steam out of an occasion where... You know, maybe things were getting... Maybe the Jane and Laura figures went south. Maybe the somebody had thrown their toys out of the pram. But Tony would come out with that... Again, one of those great phrases of either tell that cat to chill <laughs> or, uh, look, put it in perspective, dude. You know, it was that was the great thing about Tony. You Look, fantastic radio man. You'd say, you'd, Sorry, you'd say to Tony, Mario. Tony, you, you need to say, um, do you want to go out tonight, Tony? And he'd go, yeah bring your helmet and gum shield. <laughs> and you knew that that's what he meant. Bring your helmet and gum shield. But listen, I think this, this actually puts it into perspective as well. Tony was the only person in this building. Now, that's not to lie at all because there are a few people in this building with healthy egos. Tony was the only person in this building who could walk in just for an average day at work and he'd get a round of applause <laughs> because he's worth it. <laughs> and it was Tony Fenton. And if you can get a round of applause for doing nothing... What kind of an amazing opinion do people have? You're definitely people, winning. People loved him. He's winning. And actually, that was one of his. Yeah, you're the winner. <laughs> yeah. You're the winner. He Perfect. absolutely lived lived for radio, and he lived for Today FM when he was here. Look, the guy was in. The show didn't start till half two, but Tony was in from early, scaring the latest records that were released, scaring the web, scaring the newspapers for the latest bit of new music news. Like, afternoon radio generally across the country is a bit down. It's a bit miserable. It's a bit sort of moany. Tony, for two hours in the afternoon, was people, you know, provide people with that escape from the ordinary and the, the mundane. He won Broadcaster of the Year um, from the PPIs in 2008 and then was inducted into the Hall of Fame last year. W- would that have meant a lot to him? Oh, look, uh, you know, I was there, Ian was there, Mario there, and thankfully the station were, were all there because during the PPI Awards. Uh, and it's where the guy won the World Cup because he was a big soccer fan and that was Tony's equivalent of winning the World Cup. It was just a great recognition from the people in the industry who absolutely love Tony uh, that this was recognition from his peers that, you know, all the work that he put in, all the passion that he'd shown, all the joy that he brought, that it was being recognised by the industry at large and, you know, uh, it was really a marketed man at the time. He was he was also so humble. I mean, we're, we're, we're painting a picture of a guy uh, as a radio individual, but he, he was a man and, uh, you know, a human being. As Mario said, you know, hardly a day would go by with Tony when he'd ask, how's your ma, how's mm-hmm. your dad, <laughs> or how's your missus? It was just, that was the, the mark of Tony. Yeah. M- Mario, he was really supportive to many Irish, young up-and-coming Irish artists over the years, and I'm sure there's many bands out there yeah. today that will credit him with giving them, you know, their first break. Um, tell us about some of that. Well, um, I was just saying this to Ian yesterday. Uh, Tony loved radio, but Tony absolutely loved music. And he loved the thing that music does to us all, that indefinable thing that you pick up on a record and you go, there's something on this record that does something to me and that I think, if I share it with other people, can do something with other people. And I remember um, thinking that one of his great skills when I used to listen to him on the radio was when he was in the room or with an artist, with a, with a singer or a, a, an art, um, a person involved in a band, he completely changed his personality. Um, those people would always open up to him. They sensed that this guy loved music. They sensed that he understood what they went through. Um, that he wasn't just a commercial jock, in inverted commas. They sensed that he loved the music. And let's face it, as well as we all know, he loved black music. He loved the black music, he did. And he used to love having the bands in. He loved the rhythm, he recognised that. <laughs> Didn't he spend, he spent time with Quincy Jones in Los Angeles yeah. just a couple of years ago and he was watching some American football match, was it? Yeah, yeah. And eating, uh, eating popcorn and whatever, you know. Yeah. But, and you're saying, how does he do it? And he kind of, he knows the guy who cut the hair for the guy who did the whatever and somehow <laughs> the, 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 the two meet, you know. Another thing right. he loved um, yeah. were the listeners and people are texting in today in their yeah. droves, Twitter, you know, lots and lots of yeah. amazing tributes it's been paid to him today. Um, he will be really missed right around the country. Yeah, but I think he would like he would like people um, to celebrate. 
Tony Fenton. You know, he, uh, Tony liked people to be happy, liked people to enjoy music, enjoy the crack, enjoy, you know, going out, and maybe just remember him over the next few days and, uh, and, and into the future as a really positive guy. And maybe, uh, hopefully, he's inspired some people as well. But, I mean, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't think Tony would like people to be getting too down about no, it. They no. want to celebrate. Absolutely. Celebrate, you know. And just to give the final word to you then, Ian, what will his legacy be? I think his legacy will be the positivity. I think, you know, that behind, there was, uh, behind all of us, there, we were talking about earlier on about Bar- Barack Obama and he's got a, a certain persona, you know, when he's on air and then when he's off air, he's a different person. Tony was always very positive on air. At off air, he, was, he could be a little bit more kind of uh, discreet with certain people and he would let you in a little bit more. But uh, the guy you got on the radio, although it sounded like this big, larger than life DJ guy, that was Tony. Tony was Mr. Positivity. He lived through it all his life. And that's one of the reasons why we're kind of so shocked about this because, as Mario was saying, you know, you'd say, how did, how did Tony do that? Everything worked out for Tony. And we yeah. thought this was going to work out for Tony as well. And unfortunately, it hasn't. It's just so sad. Okay. And so shocking and so raw. And I mean, we're sitting here. I can't believe... That, Surreal. You know, when was the last time the three of us were in the same room together? Yeah, Peter. But, oh, oh, <laughs> last, uh, last, last but also, not to talk about, you know, the way people die and everything, but, like, Tony is... Like, there's people out there, and we stood out there just totally silent. All the whole station... It's has, unbelievable, yeah. ...has just been standing out there for, you know, 45 minutes, an hour, just standing there. Because he... He, they they all love him. Everybody loves him. Everybody's kind of hugging each other because they know that they loved Tony as well. And that that's not said, you know, in any... Um, he, he really bore his illness with a huge dignity. Yeah, he did, and he shared it. He shared his struggle and he shared his positivity and he shared his wins. He won during that illness and it came back and he won again and it came back again. And he showed people how you can fight and he showed people how you can fight these things. He did a wonderful interview with Matt Cooper, one of the yeah. best... I've heard on this on, on on radio. He did a really nice interview with Ryan Tuberty on the television, um, and he spoke with that. He's he he gets his notes ready before he speaks, and he's a brilliantly articulate speaker about that subject. And um, he shared that with everybody, but and also, also individuals. But also then, when when the, the reaction to the interview he did with Matt. Uh, he got about 80 right. emails from and people. And he spoke to them all. He spoke to them all. He got back to them all and shared his experience and went recently on. recently in who yeah. uh, experiences as well. That's right. There was a guy who was talking to him on the air and he says, I had met Tony and, and, and now he's clear and he's okay because Tony had advised him. So, I mean, he did that to each individual who emailed him, which is incredible. You know, and these are things that go on in the background. He's going to be missed. He's, he's been a great influence around this building as well, you know, so... He will be missed. I want to thank you, Mario, for joining us and Ian and Peter. That's it from today's National Lunchtime News tribute to Tony Fenton, our colleague and our friend who passed away today.